Okay, we are back and we are here to talk about my most favorite thing because it's so fascinating because everything starts in the gut. Um, thousands of types of gut microbes have been identified since it was first discovered that gut health is a critical source of overall health. Um, these microbes along with fungi and viruses that are found within the gut make up what's known as the gut microbiome. So. The gut microbiome has been shown to be the root of many health imbalances and diseases, but microbes actually co-evolve with us to live in and on various body sites and organ systems to perform critical functions. So all parts of the body have their own microbiome. The gut microbiome, however, houses the largest community of microbes in your body out of the trillions yes trillions of microbes living in and on you 95 percent of them are actually located in the gut um there there are lots of ways to take care of our gut microbiome um, and what we really want is a very diverse microbiome so the more diverse the better functioning so i want to talk about ways that we can support the gut microbiome so the first thing is that we want to choose gut friendly foods so we want to crowd out, again, those highly processed foods, uh, saturated fats, added sugars, artificial sweeteners, sweeteners such as saccharin, sucralose, fructose, sugar, and stevia have an unfavorable effect on the microbiome. So as you crowd out these foods, consider adding in sources of prebiotics, such as garlic and onions, uh, prebiotic rich fermented foods. Fermented foods are amazing for your gut. Um, it's also helpful to include foods high in inflammation fighting omega-3 fatty acids such as fatty fish um, as well as polyphenols and those are all found in fruits and vegetables. So the omega-3 fatty acids, they promote the growth of bacteria that helps decrease gut permeability like the leaky gut um, which is an autoimmune disease risk factor. Um, the polyphenols may increase the number of healthy gut flora in the microbiome again creating that more like diverse gut um, another way to support the gut is to minimize stress you guys i literally can't stress enough how much stress affects our entire well-being like not only does it create inflammation throughout our our bodies uh, which is the starting point of all diseases literally the starting point it affects our mental health um, there's a two-way connection between stress physical, emotional, and environmental, and the gut microbiome. Chronic stress can lead to dysbiosis and intestinal hyperpermeability, which is the leaky gut, allowing bacteria to flow into the bloodstream and potentially causing inflammation and health issues. So in turn, an unhealthy, unbalanced gut microbiome can trigger stress and affect your mood. I mean, it makes sense, right? Um, stress affects people differently. Therefore, managing stress is again bio-individual. So whether taking some deep breaths or putting on a funny movie and laughing out loud, it's essential to find what is most calming for you and practice those techniques as much as you can. Um, another way is to get moving. So exercise enhances the number of diversity in our gut flora. It also stimulates the growth of bacteria that protect against gastrointestinal disease and colon cancer. So moving the body regularly can positively impact your mood, which may lead to food choices that support the gut microbiome. An easy way to care for the gut microbiome is to move your body more in ways that feel good for you. Like do exercise and movement that feels good for you. Start slowly. Even a few minutes of activity a day has positive impacts. I always say just do 10 minutes a day. Go for a short bike ride, play with the kids in the yard, try chair yoga, few seated stretches. Anything that gets you moving for just 10 minutes a day is going to make a huge impact. Um, limiting antibiotic use is important for gut health. Taking antibiotics can significantly alter the number and type of bacteria in the microbiome. Um, these changes can lead to antibiotic-induced diarrhea, nausea, and vomiting. And if taking an antibiotic is necessary, consider talking to your healthcare provider about supplementing it with a probiotic to replenish the gut microbiome. That's super important. Um, although taking a probiotic and an antibiotic simultaneously is beneficial in many cases, it may help to discuss the best probiotic strains um, and take them a few hours apart because they're definitely 
between the antibiotics and the probiotics, you want to make sure it's working together well. Um, so again, with the gut friendly food choices, such as yogurt with live active cultures or raw and pasteurized sauerkraut, those are great probiotics to help support your gut if you're on those medications. Um, reducing alcohol consumption is a major factor in gut health, like so huge. Alcohol overuse may result in dysbiosis or an imbalance of beneficial and potentially harmful bacteria in the gut microbiome. Surprise. Chronic alcohol use can also cause the gut lining to become inflamed and porous, leading to a host of health issues. Like, we know, all know alcohol is bad, poison. It also causes issues with the liver, as we know, our hormones, and so many other things that we will talk about later. Um, we're going to get into that later because I have such a strong feeling towards that. A few gut-friendly alternatives to alcohol, we all know, seltzers, fresh lime, bitters, kombucha, sparkling water, frozen berries, like all the things that I love to, um, to drink now. Um, uh, adopting a pet. Cutely enough, pets help with diversifying our gut. Uh, research, research has shown that pre- and postnatal exposure of infants to household pets result in a healthier and more microbial diverse gut in children. Um, it also appears that having a family pet may positively affect other microbiomes in the body. And pet owners and their furry friends share um, common intestinal bacteria. So having a pet around while you're pregnant and in the early days of parenting may be beneficial. Um, I always like wanted to separate the two because I didn't want, you know, I didn't want the germs of the pet with the babies, but I was wrong on, on, on that aspect. Um, then, okay, so next let's talk about the gut-brain connection. Um, the gut microbiome is a complex ecosystem connected to your entire body, including your heart, your lungs, your muscles, your liver. Um, the gut and brain are also linked by bi-directional pathways that influence both your mental and your physical health. So it's the gut brain connection is like is major, major. And that's like a whole thing that's coming out now too, um, with the gut brain access. So have you ever experienced um like butterflies before a first date or uneasiness in your stomach while you're anticipating like a big presentation or any other stressful event? Um, that's the gut brain access at work. Um, it is a communication network between the central nervous system and the enteric nervous system. So the CNS and the ENS, we learned about that a little bit in school. Um, these two systems are linked by the vagus nerve. The vagus nerve, I'm like super fascinated about. It's the longest and most important nerve in the human body. Uh, this complex system plays a significant role in your physical, emotional, and mental health. It's the vagus, look up vagus nerve exercises, you guys. It's, it's awesome. Um, lastly, I want to share the gut influence on the brain and the brain's influence on the gut, that gut brain connection. So the gut in influence on the brain, when the gut is in a state of inflammation or dysbiosis and imbalanced microbiome, uh, mental and emotional well-being is going to be affected. Um, some hormones and neurotransmitters such as serotonin and dopamine are produced by, a bene by beneficial strains of gut bacteria and stored in the gut. So disruptions to this environment may affect signaling to the brain along the vagus nerve. Um, this has been linked to mental health conditions, including depression and anxiety, like major role players for that. Um, the brain's influence on the gut. So when danger or stress is recognized, the brain activates that sympathetic nervous system, also referred to as the fight or flight response. Um, ordinarily, the vagus nerve can counterbalance the fight or flight response with the pair with the parasympathetic nervous system's rest and digest response. However, prolonged danger or chronic stress impact the normal functioning of the vagus nerve, causing that ENS to slow or stall digestion, which can lead to digestive issues, including unfavorable changes in the gut microbiome. So when we're in that constant state of stress, um, when we're, so like back in the day, you know, our, um, our sympathetic nervous system was, was designed to like, okay, let's say that there's like an animal in the wild and it's, it's going to respond to that fight or flight. Are we going to fight this animal or are we going to run? That was our, our natural instinct for responding to a threat in the natural world. 
And nowadays, we don't have those immediate threats. What we what we do is we're in a state of stress based on our environment or whatever's going on, but we're in that constant chronic state of stress, which is not allowing our parasympathetic nervous system to work as much and kick in because we're constantly living in that sympathetic nervous system state, that fight or flight state. And so we don't have a chance, our, our digestion and our gut doesn't have a chance to rest and digest. And so that constant state of stress is affecting our gut, which is affecting the rest of our body. And like I said, again, on the mental aspect, affecting that as well. Um, so it's just so important to really practice like de-stressing exercises. And I know a lot of us, we don't have time. We have lots of things going on. But even if you can just do uh, three minutes of just deep breathing and relaxation, just even once a day would have a huge impact and help bring your body back to its more parasympathetic state and that rest and digest. <clears throat> so that is the gut microbiome in a nutshell. I want to talk about it more, but this video is already fairly lengthy. So um, I'll leave it at that. Of course, if you have any questions about anything or you want to know more deep dive, um, I'm always here. So that's it. Um, yeah, let's move on to our next topic, guys.